Good morning, Flats Class YouTube. Captain CA here, and it is another brisk, chilly morning. But I am taking down a couple of the holiday decorations and getting the boats charged up and ready to go for this week's charters. But all that being said, last week where we had some consistently chilly weather and water temps in the low 60s to high 50s, I employed a, a technique that has been very successful this winter. And I believe the reason it is uh, so successful is it's just been one of those winters where it stayed very cold. Uh, we haven't had too many warm up days at all and the fronts have been just freakishly close together. So let's go down to the shop and I'll show you what I've been doing. And I think it's gonna put uh, you on the path to success, especially in the month of January. But while I'm walking down there, go check out some of this action that I had just the other day with one of my good friends, Rick Arnish. got him on such light stuff oh I have 10 pound fluorocarbon leader 10 pound 10 pound fluorocarbon leader <laughs> I put some bite tippet on it I guarantee you this one's a red fish I just got to be careful because I got a little Ned. You don't want to straighten the hook out. Yeah, I don't want to straighten the hook out. I got a Ned if we need it. That's in here? Yeah. Whoa. Hold together, diamond braid. Just can't push hard. It's a snook. Really? It's a snook. As cold as it is, it's a snook. Man, I'm glad I have a little piece of bite tippet on that 10 pound. Yeah. That is a tiny hook. Tiny. Oh yeah, that's a good snook too. Easy, easy. You, it's kind of, kind of tough when you can't, can't do much. Oh, I got him hooked right in the upper part of the lip. You believe that? You believe that? Nice, <laughs> nice, Rick Stur. nice, nice, man. <clears throat> nice. What are we looking at here? <sighs> well, about twenty-seven. Yeah, he's, he's, he's probably going to be pinch tail. He'll be 28 easy. Yeah. All right. Get down here that little mid. That little mid head. He's just laying down there and I was just dragging it on the bottom. Wow. Look at that. You want a picture with him? Yeah, we'll get a picture with him. Where's your phone at? Uh, I got it sitting back there. All right, hold on. Yeah, he's a little over 28. All right. Let's talk about fishing this time of year when you have chilly weather. 
typically you see me uh, throwing a lot of Ned style baits um, or even the bugs bait. The bugs bait is perfect for this time of year but on this particular day we were having the what I call hole hop a lot. I mean we were running from spot to spot to spot and what would happen is we would find that we would catch because this was basically a trout fishing charter we would catch three four five trout and a little time would pass and we might pick up a small redfish and then nothing like zip and what was happening is the fish were kind of moving up the creek with the tide and the weather um, because the weather got progressively cooler and cooler throughout the day it never really got warm in fact i felt like our warmest temps were the first thing in the morning and it kind of moderated and then it just started driving colder so we were fishing just ahead of another front because they've been like i said freakishly close together so many times when we have something like that going on uh, and the, the snook was a complete surprise i will fish a bait that lets me somewhat power fish but it's still a finesse technique now the swimming trout trick is a three and a half inch this is a three and a half inch bait with an exaggerated cup tail rib body it comes in about 20 different colors uh, and i would say that my favorite colors in this profile from Z-Man would probably be Bad Shad Naturally. It's so natural in the clear water. Troutsicle and the Dude. Now I pair that, believe it or not, with this finesse shrooms that if I can pick it up off my mat here. This is the finesse shrooms, okay? Get a good look at that. It's a fine wire hook. Uh, it's super easy to rig and because of that mushroom head it will stand up on the bottom so I'll get a bait or or have a situation like this where this this lure will literally stand up on that flat head right up on the bottom but it also allows me to swim it really slow now because that bait is ribbed and it has a long slender tail and that cup of the tail is so exaggerated this bait kind of rolls in the water it just doesn't swim like the typical paddle tail it kind of rolls in the water so even at super slow speeds and we all know that elastec is the best soft bait that you can use when it's cold outside because it doesn't have a hard or a high durometer uh, makeup it's super super soft that means whether the water is super chill or super warm, it still performs at the same level. Still gives you the same consistent action. The other thing really nice about it is because the body is ribbed when I'm fishing so slow this time of year, it's important sometimes to add a little bit of procure or some type of scent. You put it on that rib body and it seems to stay in those crevices, especially that sticky, sticky procure for a longer period of time. And then when the fish bite the bait or come over the top of the bait, they hold on just long enough, even if you have kind of a slack line where you're dead sticking it for a second before you move it again, that they'll hang on long enough for you to get a good hook set. Hook sets are pretty easy because remember I told you about that fine wire hook. It's super sharp, almost hypodermic sharp, and it makes for when you're fishing this on a really light rod, which I'm gonna go pick the rod up here in a second. When you're fishing on a light rod that has a very parabolic um, bend to it, it's real you know, forgiving, you can come tight, the fish will get good, you know, that hook will have good hook penetration in the fish's mouth, and you'll be able to play them without losing them because if they come to the top in head shake or you're trying to reach for them there at that last second you don't have that big hole in their mouth that's important this time of year now this whole bait setup with a one tenth this is a one tenth of an ounce um, finesse shrimp's head and then the lure itself weighs probably now one tenth think about that guys that's less than one eighth so it's a light 
but don't fret. By the time you weigh that, weigh it with the plastic on a gram scale, you're up around eight grams, or that's gonna be like 9.30 seconds on the fraction if you convert it, which means it's over a quarter of an ounce. So that's, that's well within the means of a lot of super lightweight rods, lightweight actions, that you can throw like maybe a seven footer and you can still accomplish a good long 90, 100 foot cast and power finesse the swimming trout tricks. Now let's talk about the rod setup. Right now I'm gonna reach over here and get it. So when I'm looking to fish this particular style, there's not a lot of rod and reel combos that lend themselves to throwing lures effectively that are this light. Um, many of you are like, well, you said it was over a quarter. Well, that's because most inshore anglers are used to throwing lures that have eighth, three sixteenths, and quarter ounce jig heads, and all of them vary really in weights. They could be a sixteenth off either direction, um, but typically toward the heavy side. And then by the time they peg a small jerk shad, a paddle tail, or, or almost any soft bait, their lures end up getting closer to a half an ounce than they do the actual quarter ounce that they think they're throwing. So that's why understanding that rod to lure balance is really important. I mean, like paramount if you're going to be able to effectively fish. So uh, I just I just pulled this <coughs> out of the boat the other day. So. Here's my swimming trout trick. I've got about four and a half feet of leader. Now my leader starts way, way up here, okay? Uh, I, I tie it up here with a modified Albright, and then I work down four feet of 10 pound fluorocarbon, four feet. But then that last foot, which gets me to about five feet is 15 pound to 20 pound fluorocarbon. That's your preference. Uh, on this particular uh, trip with Rick, I think I had the 15 tied on uh, where we caught that snook. And I tie a no name knot right there to connect the lightweight fluorocarbon to the heavier bite tip fluorocarbon. And you're probably thinking, so why am I doing that? Well, I want the longest leader that I can have that will give me that invisibility aspect to the bait and also give it a lot of action. But by having that 10 pound fluorocarbon, you know, footprint, the knot that I tie, that little modified Albright, it goes through these guides so easily that I don't even hear it go through. Now, a lot of you say, well, why don't you tie an FG knot? And lots of times when I'm tying one piece of leader on, I will do that. But when I'm tying on at this time of year is the only time I do this, eight and 10 pounds, sometimes 12 pound fluorocarbon leaders on, and then just putting a little short piece of bite tippet, I don't go to the, the trouble of tying FG knots at that point. I'm not losing many fish because this rod, I've got a bunch of stuff here, is so parabolic. You know, it's a very bendy rod. Um, and it does a fantastic job of delivering the cast. Now this is, uh, this is in the Aquafin lineup from Fitzgerald Rods, okay? This is, I'll read the specs to you. It's a seven foot medium light. It's fast, it throws everything from 1 16th up to a half an ounce. Um, and the lure or the line weight rating on this rod is five to 10 pounds, which I'm throwing 10 pound diamond on it. Um, but many of you may even throw eight pound or six pound braid on this to give you a little bit longer cast if you think you need it. Because I'm fishing creeks and the casting, it doesn't have to be that far away. 10 pound was fine for me, but it's super, super light. I've got it on a 2000. This is a 2000, um, Shimano Vanford. Okay. Um, Shimano makes some great products. This is a nice light reel. And I just feel that the overall feel of the whole product between the lightweight, 
you know, Aquafin rod and then that lightweight reel, I can feel every little tick. And that's important to me. I'm an artificial guy. I'm, I'm throwing cast after cast after cast. And it's nice to have a setup that basically weighs nothing. Uh, but I find that this works for me. Now, there's another rod that Trevor has at Fitzgerald that is in the Brian Thrift series, and it is a Ned Rig rod. And I'm anxious to go over there next week, which I'll shoot a video next week while I'm over there, and start trying that rod out to compare it to this one. Because I told him right now, this Aquafin in that medium light 16th to half ounce rating is definitely the rod that I'm, I'm using about 50% of the time right now with this winter bite. But uh, especially with all the little bugs and Ned rigs that I'm throwing and in some of these situations where I'm throwing the swim and trout tricks on these little light finesse shrimps. But it's this type of setup, these types of baits that this time of year, if you do have to whole hop like I did in this particular episode, uh, it will make you successful. You'll just catch fish that you can't catch maybe on a bigger paddle tail or a real herky-jerky jerk shads. Um, as I get to a couple of the warm-ups where we'll see that water trend, uh, water temp trend go the other way, then you will start seeing me go back to throwing Paul Browns, go back to throwing Catch 2000s, some of the uh, Miradin XL size. But when we have falling water temperature and we don't have that big sunlight and everything, I do like to throw these little finesse baits, especially when you've got those negative tides that kind of concentrate those fish in those deeper holes along the creek. This is a good technique. Speaking of learning techniques, if you're learning stuff here at Flats Class YouTube, please give us the thumbs up. It helps us out a lot here, it really does. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our next videos because we put one out every day. And subscribe because the faster we get to 50,000 subscribers, the more places I'll be able to take all of you. All right, I'm going to preach this a lot this year. Conserve the resource so fishing gets even better in 2024. That's all I've got for now. I've got to clean the rest of this up, which is that's going to be a video too, because I've been working on this shop for a week now. Ugh.